Hello, so it's Michael here again and today I'm going to do another tutorial uh, but this time I'm going to show you how to set up a bifold door. It's a type of door I don't tend to see very often in video games but I do think they have uh, some advantages particularly if you don't have uh, much space in a scene for a standard door a bifold door might be a, a particularly good option. So there are a few different things that you have to do to get something like a bifold door set up. So I thought it might be quite an interesting project to, to go through with yourselves and uh, show how that can be done. I'm in the tutorial project again and I've got Blender open here with some models for the bifold door. These are similar to the uh, standard swing door uh, but I have made a few ad adjustments. So in regards to the actual door itself, obviously it's, it's half the size of a uh, standard door and and, uh, but if I look at the uh, pivot points on this particular one, you can see the way that it's set up. It's a little bit different in terms of the pivot point on the door frame, for example. Um, but that's just to allow us to be able to sort of move it out of the way uh, like so. Um, I will just be using one mesh in this particular tutorial. But for yourselves, you might want to use two different ones essentially it'd be the same mesh but with a different pivot point so i'll sort of explain why in in blender so if i was to rotate this open like so and then i wanted another another door it would need to essentially be attached at this end here uh, but obviously if we rotate around that particular pivot point it's not quite uh, not quite right so what we can always do is have sort of like two door meshes um, that are almost identical where the pivot points uh, moved over slightly uh, but like I said it's completely up to yourselves how you want to do that but like I said I'll show you how to do it with just using one uh, particular mesh uh, and how you can get around that so let's just uh, pop these back how they were a few other things just in regards to the door handles uh, it's just a slight variation of the slide door with this one it has a panel which normally indicate that you would push it um, which is what you normally do with a like a bifold door and then on the other side that's where the actual handle is so that would indicate to the area where you would uh, sort of pull it from of course that's just a visual aspect of things um, it's not something doesn't play any part in terms of the actual mechanics and getting it set up uh, so what I'm going to go and do is get this imported over into uh, Unreal so let's get that sorted uh, just double check this is set to go to the right place There we go. Okay, so that's those uh, particular meshes imported. Uh, since the last um, tutorial, I've actually created some basic materials for glass and, and metal. Uh, sorry, not glass, a uh, gloss and metal. So I'm just going to apply the white gloss to the door frames and the door itself. Again, these are pretty bog standard materials. Uh, quickly show you what that's set up like. So yeah, pretty pretty standard and then I'll just create some material instances where I just change these values. So nothing uh, nothing complex there. And then for the handles um, just want to add the metal material to it. And then we need the back plate as well. Okay, so that's the um, the meshes imported in. So another thing I'll quickly do as well is just create a new folder, I should call that doors, just to keep things a little bit more tidy in terms of the blueprint folder. Uh, so I'm going to move the base and the two other doors into there. Okay, before we actually go on to create the, the bifold door itself, there are a few tweaks I want to make to the actual base door itself. What these tweaks are, are, are going to be for is in regards to the actual interaction prompt that you get uh, that, that sort of pops up. Uh, what I would like it to do is when you interact with it, I'd like the outline to disappear and the little interaction prompt to disappear until it's sort of finished, uh, sort of moving as it were. Uh, so the tweaks I'm going to sort of add in just help facilitate that. Uh, so what we can do is go ahead and open up the base door. And what we want to do first is go ahead and add a new variable. It's going to be a type bool. And I'm just going to call this one 
uh, allow interaction like so and we've just got that into the interaction uh, group so with that done what we then want to do is find where the event interact uh, is and we want to do a quick check with the allow interaction so if we drag the allow interaction variable in and then we pull from that and get the branch so this is essentially if is allow interaction true if it is it'll allow the interaction and go through uh, the logic as normal if it's false then essentially it'll do nothing so if the allow interaction is true and we want to trigger the interaction we then actually want to set the allow interaction to false whilst it's doing whatever it's doing so from the true on the branch just go ahead and connect a set uh, allow interaction and that wants to be set to false so as you can see that was just placed in between the event interact and the inst uh, interaction instigator uh, variable so i'm just going to tidy these nose up a little bit there just make it a little bit tidier uh, like so now what we then need to do is actually add something in that will then set this back to true uh, after a set period of time to allow the interaction again uh, so what we can do we do have the enable hit recheck so if we actually go into that uh, and near the beginning we can add uh, our own sort of timer that would enable that particular variable again so we can go ahead and just uh, copy and paste the set timer by event and we can uh, drag that in and we'll just connect that up to the uh, is valid um, in there so it's just uh, essentially going to be telling it to set a timer before it, it just does the other check now in terms of the function that we want to call we don't yet have this function so what we can actually do under the little drop down um, we can select where it says create a matching function and this will create a brand new function uh, I'm not too too happy with the name so I'm just going to rename the uh, function that's created I'm just going to call this one enable allow interaction that's so and then we just drag in the allow interaction we want to make sure we are setting it and then we'll just make sure that's set to uh, true so it's coming back to the enable hit recheck function to make sure that it has set it correctly uh, what it should have done uh, in terms of the the timings uh, you probably want this to be the same as the uh, hit recheck but obviously you can have a play around with these to see which sort of values you feel is uh, most appropriate for your particular game one next thing we want to do is that it's just in regards to the outline so we do want it so that the outline sort of gets turned off. So I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new function. Uh, I'm just going to call this one clear outline. And we just do a set render target. Uh, sorry, a uh, set render custom depth even. Uh, and that would be for the, the door itself. So you could just pull a reference to the door in from the components list and then get it that way. Uh, so it's up to you how you want to uh, achieve that so with that in um, you can compile that and then go back to the event graph and then what we want to do just after the where we set the interaction instigator we want to call the clear outline function uh, like so so what will happen is when we interact with something it should clear the outline so we can quickly check that now so if we come in and interact with this oh, I forgot to uh, set the allow interaction needs to be true by default so just select that and uh, set the default value to true uh, so then if we come back in and try now the outline disappears uh, when you interact with it and then it comes back in when you're finished that should be the same with the uh, sliding door as well great so the next thing is just in regards to the text itself uh, so I do want the text to disappear as well so what we can do on that so we go back to the the base we do have the get interact text at the moment that's just set to open and close depending on the uh, door state so what we can do we can go ahead and uh, just copy the select node and, and, and connect that up to the interact text on the return portion 
and then what we can do from the interaction uh, we'll get that allow interaction variable again and we'll connect that to the index so if it's true we would just call the options that we have so that'll be the open or close if it's false so we don't we're not allowing the interaction we're just going to make it empty so it's kind of like be a blank text field as it were so we'll go ahead and just tidy this up a little bit okay so that's that done so if we quickly test this one again you'll sort of see what effect that's having now so if we interact you'll notice the text itself does disappear which is great however we do still get the interaction icon itself uh, showing so we want to get that to hide as well so a nice easy way to, to sort of add that functionality is if we modify the inter interaction prompt widget itself so if we open that up and go to the graph uh, sorry the uh, design view and you want to select the interact text so the way that this is currently set up is that it's um, bound to the interact text variable uh, which is in the uh, graph view so it's this here so but instead of it being just a text we want to create a new binding and have it bind to a function instead so we can do some checks so what we can do is we can create the binding so if you select the interaction text then under the text under the context section click the little drop down and then just create new binding and what this will do to create a brand new function I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to get interact text Although, uh, yeah, that's fine. And you'll get something like this. So this particular return value is essentially what's going to be displayed in the text field. So we could just connect the interact text like so, and it'll function exactly the same as we had it previously. Uh, but what we can do is if we grab the interact text, we can check if the text is empty. So if we do text is empty, like so, and then we want to do a branch from the text is empty node and connect that up to the start now if the text is empty what we want to do is we want to actually set the visibility for this widget to be uh, hidden so if we get a set visibility node make sure the target is widget and we change the invisibility to hidden and we can set that to true and then for the we can just copy the return node and we just have the return value is, is empty as well. The next thing we want to do uh, is actually then check to see, uh, sorry, to handle the, uh, the false statement. So if there is text in there, what do we want to do? Now, there might be a scenario where the widget already visible, is already generated, but it's currently set to hidden. So what we need to do uh, is actually check the text itself uh, sorry, uh, not check the that itself. We need to check the widget to see if it's invisible. So if we just do the get visibility, that will get the visibility for the widget as a whole, uh, which is essentially what we're setting here. And we can then check if um, essentially if it's not equal to visible, then we want to make it visible. So I'll quit, I will run through this again in a second. So I do, I do feel like I've uh, possibly mumbled my way through that. Um, so what we can do is just grab another branch, connect it up like so, and this time I want to do set visibility and want that to be visible. Uh, if it's false, so it's already visible, we can just return the interact text. So. And then we'll drag that down to there as well. Like so. Okay, yeah, so uh, I'll quickly go through this again. So essentially what will happen is whenever it goes to update the text in the interact prompt, it will first check to see if the interact text is empty. If it is, it will set the widget uh, to hidden. If there is text in the, uh, in the interact text, it will then check to see if the widget is visible. If it's not visible, it will make it visible. If it is already visible, it will then just go to the return node and return the interaction text and update. So that should be it. So now if we go back to uh, the play and we test it, when we interact, the interact box disappears. And then when it's finished, it'll uh, show back up again so you can uh, 
see now you can interact again and that work should work for all doors like so okay so, yeah, so that's the few uh, tweaks I wanted to make there just in regards to uh, the the actual base door class uh, as it were so now we can go ahead and start looking at making uh, the bifold door so go to your door base and we want to go ahead and create a new child blueprint I'm just going to call this one uh, BP underscore door uh, bifold and then we can go ahead and open that up and start looking at uh, getting in the, the new meshes so I'll start with the door frame for the bifold door and then the door itself make sure that's the bifold one and that looks like it's disappeared somewhere oh, because I've got the wrong one selected um, there we go I believe we just need to move this over a little bit and in terms of the overall positioning that would obviously vary slightly depending on the actual meshes you're using and then the back plate so we'll get that as the bifold one and then for the handle we want that to be the bifold handle as well okay Okay then, so the next thing we do need to do is actually add the second door uh, for the bifold door. So I'm just going to copy the, the door itself and then we'll paste that in. Uh, so you'll end up with another one that's called like door one. I'm just going to drag this onto door, which should uh, attach them. So for any point you then rotate the uh, first door, uh, the other one will rotate with it, which is what we want. So we'll just then move this door into position. Um, so it's roughly there although what I do need to do is actually invert uh, do I need to do that let me uh, check so I'm just checking the uh, origins at the moment no nope, that's the wrong mesh let me uh, update that one okay there we go So just positioning these door pieces at the moment. I think that's a little bit close. So let's um, try a half in there. Wrong way. Uh, yep, that looks uh, looks okay to me. So going back to the uh, pivot points. So obviously what we're going to be doing is uh, rotating these pieces uh, separately. So if we was to rotate the the main one, you can see how the other one one moves with it. But then what what we then want to do is also rotate this one. But if you notice, if we're rotating around that pivot, the direction it needs to rotate to, it it's, um, it sort of ends up in the wrong in the wrong place. Uh, due to where that particular pivot point is so what we can do is actually scale the mesh itself uh, in a negative number which is kind of like flip it so if I was to do it on the ooh, let me check the axis I believe that would be the x-axis I want to do so I'm just going to set that to minus one you'll notice it has, it has sort of moved away almost and flipped uh, that itself is perfectly fine and just then bring that back to where it needs to be like so now if we rotate the main door and then rotate the secondary door you can see it, it rotates around the pivot that we want it to uh, so that's what you can do to achieve something like that okay so we've nearly there in terms of setting these up the next thing is the actual plates themselves the handle plates so I'm just going to set those up Okay, and move that a little bit closer to the centre. Okay, so the thing with the back plates and the handle is it's currently attached to the main door. So if you rotate the main door, those will also rotate as well. 
uh, which in itself might look okay but then when you then rotate the second door that you want them to actually be attached to um, yeah it's not what we're wanting so what we need to do is actually attach the uh, the handle back plate to that secondary door that we've got now with this being a child a blueprint where this is set in the child we can't actually change the hierarchy in in the editor however what we can do is actually do so through uh, through the blueprints itself so if we go to the construction script and we want to add the get the attach component to component and it will be for the hand uh, handle back plate like so and we just connect that up for the constru uh, construction script now for the parent that will be the door one so what I'll do I'll actually just rename this to underscore bifold uh, underscore r just so we know it's the right side so we'll drag that in and we'll plug that into the parent uh, and what that will do is it will reattach the handles uh, accordingly and you should see that in the viewport itself now what we can then do uh, is actually just readjust the back plate to where it needs to be positioned um, it looks like we do need to rotate that as well just to get it in the right place okay so I think we're almost there so if we rotate the main door again and then rotate the bifold door the handle will rotate with the correct door which is what we want okay so let me just reset these particular values right then so that's uh, half the bifold door done uh, what we can do now is go ahead and start looking at setting up some of the functions to actually get that to rotate where we want it to so if we go to the uh, event graph and we can go ahead and create uh, something similar to what we did in the um, so not the slide door uh, similar to the swing door uh, which is this here so we can actually just go ahead and just just copy that uh, and we can just paste that into the bifold uh, just because generally it's, it's going to function very very similar so that's going to save us some some time so in terms of the timeline it just goes from zero uh, to one over one second uh, with a smooth easing on there and then we then use that to adjust the rotations of the, of the actual doors so if we were to go ahead and test this so if we drag the bifold door in and then we go to interact with it uh, nothing happens um, okay I remember now so I just need to quickly do the uh, open door and the closed door so if we override the open door so from the functions panel for override and the function you want to add is just the anim door function the open door so in the open door function that's where we call this particular one here the custom event that triggers the timeline and then we want to do a similar thing thing for the closed door but we we'll are recalling the uh, closed door state now if we test it we should see that the door itself does does rotate uh, so we're halfway there uh, now in terms of these particular values for the timeline uh, regarding the rotations this is where we want to start adjusting things a little bit so for the alert value for the main door uh, this is going to be about 81 uh, degrees and then we can actually go ahead and pull in a reference to the the bifold of the right side and we want to set the relative location for that one as well like so and then we can copy the alert rotator node and we can connect that to the new rotation connect the alpha from the timeline and then we can look at uh, modifying these values here so I believe for this one it's about 170 so if we try it now okay so it sort of worked uh, it just went the wrong way so let's uh, let's try that as minus 170 there we go so as you can see uh, 
it's now rotating, although it is doing so a little bit strangely. So let me double check the uh, pivot points. Mop it up in here, so that should be about eight ish there. Okay, so it should be positive. Um, so let's go back to the event graph. 170 ish. Uh, so the reason I'm using um, 170 is just because it's double this value here. Okay. So why is it rotating that way? Is it rotating the right way? No, it's not. Okay, so this one I think is the one that needs to be the negative. So minus 85 on the main door. Now let's try that one. There we go. So now, as you can see, uh, it's starting to look how it's uh, supposed to. So for the for the most part. The bifold door is almost almost complete. So another thing we do need to, need to be aware of, as you probably notice, is when we hover over the door, it's only highlighting one of the panels. So what we'll do is we'll quickly go ahead and get that sorted out, so it um, does both of them. So what we can do is we can pull in the set outline state. So this is the blueprint interface. Now, what we do need to do is, because this is in, this is called in the parent, we need to make sure that that logic is still being called as well. So what we can do, if you right click on this particular event node, there is a option called add call to parent function. And this will give you a, an orange node that's um, that has sort of an input for, for the output there. So what we can do is just go ahead and connect these up like so. And that'll just mean that whenever this gets called, it will also call what's in the parent. If this isn't connected, it'll just call whatever's in here. Uh, but we do want to make sure that what's in the parent's called as well in this particular instance. So there is a bit of flexibility there depending on what it is that you're wanting to happen. Uh, what we then want to do is do the set render custom depth again. Uh, but this time I want to do it for the the other half, so the uh, the right side, and we can set that to whatever this show value is. That's so. So now, when we look at it, it should show both sides. Yep. Lovely. Okay. Now you may also notice that when we're actually looking at and we're interacting with it, the outline itself disappears on one side, but not the other. So for this, we just need to do something similar as we did in the parent. So if we get the uh, allow interaction, and from here, we can do an and like so so if it's asking to show uh, the outline allow interaction also has to be true as well otherwise it won't show the outline uh, the last thing we need to do in regards to the outline interactions is we just need to override the a clear outline and what we need to do on this is make it so it clears the outline for the right side so as you notice because we are overriding the function we do get the orange one so you do need to make sure that's connected as well that's just so the uh, what's in the parent gets called as well All right, so we do the set uh, custom render depth and we just want that to be set to uh, false so that's just allowing us to set that to for the other component as well now if we try it, so when we interact the outline disappears for, for both sides. Okay. 
So let me just quickly reset the rotations on these. That's so. Right then, so the last thing we do need to do, and that's just to handle the door open and close states for when you're setting it in the in the editor. So at the moment, when we set it to true, nothing happens. So if we go to the construction script, uh, what we need to do is a very similar. Uh, we just need to set the relative rotations for the two uh, sides. So I've just copied and pasted those from the uh, from the other event graph. What we can then do is do the uh, select rotator. Uh, we need one for each of them. And then we can get the door uh, open a variable. And we can connect those to the pick A input. Uh, like so. And then it's just a case of setting the values. So the values would be the same as what's in here. So it's minus 85 uh, for the main door. So minus 85. And then it's 170 for the other one. So we we'll quickly double check the one. Well, it does seem to be inverted. I think I've put them on the wrong ones. Uh, yep, so that should be on the top one there. Just swap those around. There we go. So now the door states uh, are updating based on that uh, variable. The last thing we need to do is to just call that set swing states function. Uh, and we do select uh, float. So if the door is open, we want to set that value to 1. Uh, and this just sets the starting position within the timeline. Okay. There we go. So that is a bifold door. Which I think looks quite nice. So in terms of the uh, sort of swing space that it takes up, it's less than that of, say, a conventional door like so. So if you've, you know, feel, it's starting to feel a bit cramped, you know, a bifold door is not always a bad option. <laughs> so yes, hopefully you found this uh, tutorial useful. Uh, obviously, if you did like it, by all means, leave a uh, leave a comment. Let me know. But yeah, I just want to say thanks for watching and take care.